Do I need GraphQL now we have React Server components? It's a great question I find online. Server components have been a hot topic in React, especially in the last few months. And now that Next.js has released Next.js for a theme, the topic is up for debate. Developers, for example, would now be able to query a database directly from their React components. Even though I wouldn't recommend doing this, it does bring up a good discussion. Do we still need GraphQL now that we can query backends or even databases directly from our frontend? The long answer, as anything in software development, is it depends. The short answer consists of two parts. If you're a solo developer or small startup team, you probably don't need GraphQL. If you are a growing organization or even an enterprise, you definitely need to look at GraphQL. So let's dive into the answer. Myself, I'm a huge fan of GraphQL. I've been talking about GraphQL for ages and I spoke at most of the GraphQL conferences that you will find today. But I also am realistic enough to understand that GraphQL isn't a silver bullet to any problem we're facing. So let's get back to Next.js 4 theme and the introduction of React Server Components. It's something we've been waiting for for a long, long time, myself included. I've been writing React components, or actually React applications, for almost six or seven years now. Server components will help you to decrease your bundle size by loading part of your data server-side instead of client-side. Server components should help you speed up your front-end web experience. It also tries to address some of the problems TRPC has been addressing. With TRPC, you can bring your backends closer to your frontends and thereby, automatically, reach end-to-end -end type safety. Previously, I recorded a video around GraphQL versus TRPC, and some of the things I've discussed in that video are also really valid points when discussing GraphQL in a world where we also have React Server components. I really recommend you to have a look at this video if you're curious about TRPC after watching the rest of this video. Let's get back to our main point and look at if GraphQL would still make sense in a world where React developers are writing React server components instead of using a backend to request their data from. For a long time, frontend developers saw GraphQL as a way to reach end-to-end -end type safety or even introduce some sort of type system into their frontend applications. And this is a great way of using GraphQL, but it's not what GraphQL was actually meant for. And it also isn't the thing GraphQL stands out in. I like to say GraphQL doesn't excel as these one-to-one -one setups where you're querying a single database or a backend from a single application. GraphQL is really good when you're working with multiple backends or multiple applications and trying to merge all this data together into a single API. If you're building a to-do app, a Hello World app, or maybe your portfolio website, it probably doesn't make any sense at all to use a technology like GraphQL. It will only lead to added complexity and more things you need to update and maintain in the long run. Similarly, most solo developers, indie hackers, or even small startup teams won't be able to grasp all the benefits GraphQL can give you. GraphQL can give you all sorts of benefits, but it comes with a cost. And this cost is probably not even worth it to most teams working with a very small application or that they're still relying on this one-to-one -one connection between their backend data source and their frontend application. Of course, there are lots of ways to easily build GraphQL APIs. Myself, I worked at a startup called StepSend, and at StepSend we developed a solution to help you build GraphQL APIs based on your existing data sources. Just by running a simple CLI command, you will be able to get a production-ready GraphQL API. And of course, we're still developing this solution. And next to StepSend, there are plenty of other tools in the GraphQL ecosystem that help you build your GraphQL APIs without too much effort. And for a group of developers, GraphQL will always remain their choice of backend. Because if you're a GraphQL enthusiast like myself, you like the technology and it's something that works well for you. It doesn't mean it works well for everyone. And then that's why I can also see React Server components getting very popular amongst a group of developers that have this one-on-one -on -one connection between their backend or data source. Server components will give them the ease of rapidly being able to prototype, adding new features, and don't have to mess with additional dependencies or middleware layers they need to maintain. 
it will just give them more flexibility to scale their application, hopefully to tons of users. But I also have doubts how well React Server components will scale in the long run if you actually start serving all these different users with your product. Especially if we look at the example we saw at Next.js Conf, where they were querying a database directly from a React component. I don't think you should do this, and I don't think growing teams will actually implement this sort of structure. They probably will benefit more by using something like DRPC. So we've looked at solo developers and small startup teams and maybe even growing teams. But when should you actually use GraphQL? It's a very good question and it's a very valid question. It's a question I've been getting more and more lately. I can also recommend this video by Theo Brown that was recorded at GraphQL.com, where he discussed what is the right size of GraphQL. And this video perfectly explains when you should start to look at GraphQL and when you're probably better off by using something like React Server Components or even TRPC. So GraphQL is very good at helping you to maintain relationships between multiple backends and multiple applications. This is what I called in the beginning of this video the one-to-many or the many-to-many -many setup. In this case, GraphQL, often by using GraphQL Federation or by using the new setup for GraphQL, which is called GraphQL Fusion, which allows you to bring together multiple GraphQL backends. By using something like this and using GraphQL as a single source of truth for different backends, you can actually benefit most of GraphQL because it will give you discoverability into all your data sources and give every developer that integrates with your GraphQL API control of the data structure that they load into their applications. So do I think GraphQL is no longer needed now we live in a world of React Server components? Well, as I said in the beginning, it really depends. It depends on the size of your product, the size of your team, and also, as we're all developers, on your own preferences. So if you have decided to pick up GraphQL for your startup or for your team, for your product, whatever you're building, make sure to have a look at all my other videos on YouTube.